Hello again. Welcome to a new session on WordCamp Portal 2024. We have Rade Yekic. Mm, Great. Right. I got it. Well, Rade is a front end technical lead at Spot Hooper, is from Serbia, and he has an experienced information technology consultant and instructor with uh, working on information technology and services industry. Rade is from Valjevo, a uh, town near, uh, near Belgrade. Near, near, yeah. yeah, is the first time in Portugal. And uh, besides other things, is a drummer. He plays the drums, rock music, especially. And he is also teaching his girl from uh, seven years old, five. or five years old, and the boy from seven. with seven, yeah, yeah. Uh, to play the drums. Good that. Rade, <laughs> your time. Multi-site, demystified. Can we use the WordPress as a SaaS? Thank you for a great introduction. Uh, <laughs> great. Thank you all. Uh, first, we can demystify this uh, using as a SaaS business model. Uh, every site that you present to your customer, when, when you finish the site and you give it to your customer, if it's... Uh, uh, some things are locked. Something customer cannot change. Or almost all agencies do this that way. They they give the customer site, and customer can change the content, but not change anything else. Almost anything else. So in in some way, every WordPress site is a software as a service. You gave them just to to use it and not to change it. But in this case, we'll talk about multi-site. Uh, do you have any idea what is uh, the multi-site? Multi-site, how you pronounce? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, are those terms, uh, have, have you heard about those terms anywhere? Yes. Great. So, this is one most interesting super administrator. It's in red and it uh, says that that administrator is super. It's, it's great. So, something like that. What is multi-site? Uh, WordPress multi-site is configuration that enables multiple websites on the same WordPress installation. Uh, you can uh, read this in a, in a teaser way, like in the movies, when you get a trailer and you know one installation to rule them all. So you use just one installation of WordPress and num numerous sites, uh, sites uh, on that installation. Uh, in the beginning, when you try to 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 go into multi-site world, because uh, multi-site is uh, some kind of abandoned child of the WordPress. Not many people know about multi-site. They they don't use multi-site, but uh, it is a great tool if you know how to use it. Uh, in our company, we decided to provide another feature to use the WordPress uh, to provide uh, uh, to create the sites for for customers, where customers have uh, more power than than on our template sites. So we decided to use a multi-site. And uh, in the first moment, when you talk about multi-site, you must uh, decide should you use. Uh, subdomain or subdirectory. This is the first step. When you decide this, your business model is defined. So if you, you, you can see here example com. So when you create a subdomain, uh, then this is subdomain of the example com. So every site in your network can have this site domain. And if you decide to go to subdirectory, it is the most easiest way for all the people that are creating sites for, uh, for a, for uh, customers, so they buy a domain. On that domain, they put a slash, and in folder inside the root folder, they create a, a complete website for their clients. So, this is another way. There, there is a caveat: if you have new website that is uh, fresh, new, you create one WordPress installation, you can decide whatever you want. You can use subdomain or subdirectory, but if you have your website with the content, I would say that is the best way to create uh, some domains. Also, if it is on local host, if you're creating using Docker or using any other uh, XAMPP, MAMP or any other tool that uses local host, you cannot create anything else but subdirectory because you're not using subdomains and domains. So, next. What are the pros? Huge network. You can create 
pretty big networks. Do you know what is the maybe the the biggest network of that is created a small multi site on the internet? WordPress.com. Yes. <laughs> WordPress.com is one of the biggest. Also, the WordCamp.org. Every WordCamp has its own subdomain. Porto has subdomain. Vienna has its subdomain, and so on. So, you have one WordPress instance, only one, and it's easy to maintain because it's one. Also, teams and plugins, you install it on one place. You do not install on every site, just on one place. And also plugins that require licenses that are pro plugins, you can, if they support multi-site, you can create license on every specific website. So every site in the network, it's called sites in the network. Every site in the network can have separate license. So it's not a problem. Also, every site can have and use its own team and set of plugins. So not uh, if you if you are talking about network of websites, they do not need to look the same. Every site can be completely different with content design and all the plugins uh, needed for that site activated. Also, the user management on one place you create all the users, or you can create user for specific website. But there is a difference if you create in one place then you can just add that created user to any website in the network if you create uh, in the last version, sorry, in the last version it's changed. So if you create it in the separate website, it can be used in the whole network. But you decide what role user has on each separate site. So it's not in, in the beginning you define user inside the network, but for every specific site you can design his role. So the role of the one user that is super administrator, uh, super administrator is specific user. That is the, the end here. Uh, it is a new user role. When, you, when, when we speak about WordPress, we say that administrator is God. No, but no one above administrator. But in a network of sites, super administrator is same role as administrator on a single a website that is not part of the network on the standard WordPress installation. And administrator in the WordPress network, in the multi-site, is almost nothing. It is It can change things only on one specific site. And in this case, you can set super administrator, person that can access all sites in the network. You can say that on specific site it's just subscriber. He's not administrator at all. So you can uh, finally gain control who can access what. Also, uh, and what are cons? Plugins, not all plugins support multi-site. Some plugins, uh, uh, in most cases, I found that backup plugins must, you, you must use specific version of that plugin because uh, it doesn't support multi-site. So you must buy and purchase. In most cases, these are not free. So you must buy some plugin for that. And in this case, maybe backup solution, th there are better backup solutions than using the plugin. A special version of, as I said, not all plugins have multi-site versions, but most of them have. Also plugins must be installed. They are installed on the network level. They are installed in that specific first WordPress installation and activated there and enabled. So there are three, three terms, installation, activations, and enabling. Installation is when you install in a network. You cannot install a plugin for a specific site. You cannot go to one site in a network and install a plugin. There is no option for that. That plugin must, must be installed network-wide and can be activated network-wide. In this moment, every site in a network has access to the plugin, can use the plugin, or you can enable, so you do not activate in a moment of installation of the plugin, you do not activate him, you just put it there, go to specific website and enable it on that website. So that is the main difference. Changing. Team and plugin can affect all sites in the network. 
after this, I will talk about our user case in our company and you will see what are the problems. Among them, the main problem is this. Uh, we are using in our package, in our WordPress version, we are using uh, Gutenberg. We are close to the core. We are not using classic, not using page builders and so on. And uh, we use uh, one team for all sites. We just change the blocks and the layout of the sites. And if you change something in a team JSON, just remember in this moment, if you change something in a team JSON, it affects all the sites. We'll get back to it later. A database can become very big. As I said, backup and restore is pretty, pretty intense. And you have to, in, in this, when we talk about business model, there is a best way is to have a person that is a dedicated DevOps for you, for your company, because someone needs to do this backup and restore also the security can be a problem because if someone hacks the main website uh, then in the in that case uh, most of the sites uh, all of the sites in the network can be compromised uh, yes i want to use it how to do this uh, you need server hosting that allows multi-site so Shared hosting does not allow multi-site. You have to buy VPS or managed hosting or so. Uh, single one WordPress installation you have. Plugins, list of plugins that we'll use and list of teams that we'll, we will use. Pretty good mode. You have to be pretty. <laughs> and uh, uh, nerves, preferably the steel ones. I, uh, I'm, I'm not the person that has the nerves, but yes, I, I, I used to it now. Uh, so this is warning like when you go to to dr drugery or pharmacy and you buy a drug, uh, then this is information that I gave you uh, that it would be best to use newly installed system. So you start from scratch. As always, you begin in WordPress VP uh, config file and just add those lines. Define VP hello, VP hello multi-site true. And after that, uh, login to WordPress, you use credentials for login. So you install basic WordPress, add this, login again, and nothing happened. I tried to install this and I was in a circle because nothing in the in, in inter interface, nothing changed because you need to go, sorry, you need to go to these tools and there is hidden part that says network setup. This is the place subdomain or subdirectory, you decide what to do this. And maybe if you're using localhost, uh, those will not be the options, only options will be subdirectory. And you decide, uh, you see how, how hidden this option is, and you cannot find it if you are not looking, and you add network title and admin email. And this is the last, last step. Uh, your installation is uh, saying, put this in those two files, in the HD access and uh, VP uh, config file, yeah. Uh, this is automatically added if there are uh, all the permissions uh, correct on a server. If not, edit yourself. And after that, log in again. And everything is great. The Kraken is released. In this moment, you know that you, sorry girls, but you fucked up <laughs> because you don't know what you're doing next. So, uh, there is my sites option, and uh, unfortunately that option cannot be changed. It must be my sites. Uh, this is the name of the first site in the network. This is the site that you created. This is the first site in the network. It's and you create all other sites on the next. Yeah, uh, all sites are created by uh, going to sites and add site. It's it's simple. There are plugins that you can use that can clone site. In our specific case at Spothopper, uh, we use one installation that is prepared for every other site. And we are using the plugin that is uh, abandoned from the company that you all know. It's a WebPMU dev company and it's called, called Cloner. And that plugin you use to clone the website. Just add title, add a specific subdomain and add title for site. After a few minutes, everything is prepared. Also, one specific thing. Uh, there are, uh, you can use your own domain for every site in the network. So 
in the installation process, every site gets subdomain of the main domain. But there is something that is called domain mapping, and it is part of the core now. It wasn't part of the core. You had to use plugin for domain mapping, and that plugin is still exists on the on the uh, on the directory. Yes, yeah, sorry, uh, the plugin still exists, but you don't need to use it because domain mapping is part of the WordPress core. And what is domain mapping? You just go to editing specific site. Maybe I create. No, I didn't create. Go to specific site. Go to edit and just enter new. URL. Everything in this part is over. Just the your IT guy DevOps should uh, do magic in cPanel or any other panel that is using on hosting and redirect uh, that previous set subdomain to this specific domain. So every site in our network uses its own domain. In the process of testing everything, that site uh, has a test domain. After that, when they go live, they have their own domain, they access it, and that's all. So this is great. You can uh, enlarge it. Uh, you can create uh, great tons of sites in this, in this way. I'm not sure we are currently in testing process, and we, are, we have uh, 12,000 sites in our system, but only 100 sites on, on uh, multi-site. And they are working great. If you have backup solution, hosting backup solution is the best. So you have backup solution, recovery plan, and everything else, else set up. It's easy peasy, as, as English said. So uh, that can be great. Just to revert back to Team JSON file, as I said before. Uh, in the beginning, uh, that was a version uh, 6.1, I think. And I use plugin, I think that all of you know about it. It's a create block team plugin. You create it, you use that. That's a plugin for that has a boilerplate for creating block team. When you use that plugin, uh, then you can add Google Fonts. Now that's part of the core. Now you can just go to styles uh, inside Gutenberg and uh, change fonts there. But that there is a difference. If you use create block plugin, every plugin that you add uh, writes down in the in the team JSON file. So, when our designer starts working on a website, he clicks, uh, downloads the plug, uh, downloads the font, and the font is automatically magically added to team JSON file. And after a few days, creates another site, or after ten sites, create eleven sites. And he said, "Oh, I don't need this plugin for this site," and he removes that. And that plugin is removed from all sites that are using that. And that is the problem. But it's sold in new version of WordPress because every pli every uh, font, sorry, I, I'm saying plugin, it's font. Every font that you add, you add to database. You're not adding it to Team JSON. So that's great. If there is a need to, to make specific changes in Team JSON, please copy the team and use the specific copy of the team for the specific site. So that is a quid. Also, the quid can be uh, the base database because you know how the da database for single uh, WordPress installation looks. You know there are twelve tables or fourteen tables. I'm, I'm not sure how how much. And here, every site has its number and has all the tables that are presented in a WordPress installation standard. Almost all the tables and additional tables. So the tables that are same for all websites uh, do not have a, prefix, a suffix sorry, as the number. So VP uh, 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 underscore <laughs> oh. VP underscore two is uh, for the second website in the network. Thank you. Uh, without underscore, it's uh, same table for all websites. So there are tables, VP blogs, and so that are. Uh, that has the all info that is related to complete network. Also, uh, one more important thing uh, by default, on so this is all. These are all the problems that I had in creating multi-site. Uh, so, in some specific, I don't know why reason, uh, designers in our company are used to uh, to use. Uh, they want to use SVG elements. They want to use SVG borders between sections. And there is no way to use them on a multi-site 
before you activate something that's called uh, uh, use unfiltered, unfiltered HTML. And this can be a security risk because not even super admin can use it with, without this. So in order to do this, you must enter this line into VP config and be careful. So we created this, and after I put this line into VP config, none of the designers created SVG again. <laughs> and I spent almost two weeks in fixing this, yes. So, uh, and those are useful resources. Uh, VP Beginner Com has the first tutorial that I visited to, to, to see what the multi-site is. And if anyone tells, tells you the multi-site multi -site is not something that's useful, they are wrong. It's a great way to create your own business model. Uh, there is interesting thing I found a couple of, be, between VP Vienna, uh, VP Vienna and this, it's called gray, gray D suit, gray ipsi, epsilon D dot suite. That is the site that you should go and look. And this is important because uh, they are using multi-site as a base and they created completely uh, useful and, and great business model of, on, on it. And that's all. Thank you. Questions and oh, if there is time for questions. Yeah. Thanks, Rade. So questions and we have at least two uh, oh. questions there. Where's the microphone? No microphone? I will take it. Okay. I hope that, that there is something I know. Let's go for <laughs> it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I want to know how difficult or easy is it to transfer a multi-site back to a single site? Uh, it can be difficult. It can be easy. Uh, it depends on your knowledge. But like every, every time, yes? It can be done in specific ways. There is a plugin that you can install that uh, just rips off one site from a multi-site and create a single version. You can just extract the database from the complete database, just extract database for that site, create another site and, back and restore database there. So there is no... Uh, uh, there is no single way. You, you cannot go and undo this defined multi-site it will not work because it will not know what site should it, it restore. So the best way, the way that we use is just to go and uh, pick up the database of the website that I need to, to move and put it on uh, another installation. So basically, so basically you, you know the, the underscore uh, yes, number. The number, the number, the number. Every site in the list, every site in the list. Tables. When you when you uh, go and see the list of the websites, you will see. Uh, so the it's number. like a manual process. Yes, it's yes. Not very the number. So that's it. Also, uh, I didn't uh, specify this, but all the sites in the network use same uploads folder. Mm. Inside that folder, there is number of the oh, website, okay. and under yeah, there there are images, okay. and the caveat can be that anyone with the link can access image on every website in the network but it can be it can be changed you can set it but default version is that a question uh, here and there okay oh hi great talk thank you um, so i have two questions um, sometimes i manage i do some debugging in customers websites that use multi site and it's a bit painful uh, to to debug there. Uh, but my question is, uh, wouldn't it be better to um, to create separate tables for the subsites instead of having uh, yes. a big database? I yes, we are testing now mm -hmm. when we talk. Our DevOps guys are testing this solution. So we have one server with a complete huge database. It's not huge in this moment, but it will be huge. Uh, and on the other side, they have separate tables for every website. So it is, uh, but it's decision that you must uh, uh, come with in in a moment when you when you create. Mm -hmm. It's hard after that because th there is some things that you must change manually in the in the database and so on. So it's be best to say, okay, I want to do this and create this way. Both ways has uh, 
advantages and caveats, but yes, it's better because it's easier to, to maintain, to backup, restore, to, to find the restore solution. Okay. If, okay. Okay. Just one question uh, okay. quickly. Uh, it's it's doable to um, to make the customers create their own site instead of the super admin uh, create the, uh, the site for them. They must be super admins. So, the customer must be super admin. There is a way you can create a plugin or you can uh, buy a plugin. I think we we haven't tested yet. Uh, that can. Uh, 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 enable a specific user that is not super admin to create, just to create a site in a moment, and that's all. And to maintain that site, yes. One question and answer. It's, uh, my, my question was regarding the first one, the extraction process yes. of, of ex extracting a, a single site from a yes, multi-site. Yes, yes. I did that like six six years ago. It was like a pain in the ass. I almost yes. killed myself. But you you were mentioning that uh, there is currently it, it's currently easier to do that, to re uh, recurring to a plugin. Uh, which uh, one was that? I'm not sure how. Uh, what, what is the name of, of the plugin? It was okay. commercial plugin. But, but, but it's I now saw, easier. But I saw that there is a plugin. It's some kind of backup plugin, like a duplicator or or, okay. or uh, all in one of migration. I'm not sure what plugin is it, but it says that it can uh, just pick up site from the list and it will create a uh, 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 restore for, uh, file not, for for that. Restore. Not planning on doing it again, but it's great to know. Thank yeah. you for our presentation. Okay, we have just a very quick mention. Yeah, I just want to mention that um, everybody who wants to use multi-site, look into WP CLI. There's solutions for multi-site for that. You will love it. You will never use like You can extract sites and all of those things. Yes. WP CLI when using multi-site. And also when you're not using multi-site, you uh, are free and you should use and learn to use WP CLI because it's, it's a tool of the future. Rade. Thank you.